Okay, morning everyone. I hope you guys had a good night's sleep last night. So uh, the first module is about uh, uh, using R and XCMS for processing LCMS uh, uh, spectrum. So it's uh, uh, so this is going to be a, a, a lecture you guys follow. So it's also practical lab. But we're going to have a um, lots of time. So I'm going to slow down a bit, and at the same time, and you guys have questions, stop and ask questions. <coughs> So this is standard slides, and, uh, and so uh, today is going to have two hours for us, so 8.13 to 10.13, so it's two hours, so our, we really have lots of time, so um, just uh, uh, take it easy, and uh, I can slow down, and we just understand each command line by line. So again, this is a, a, a R, and uh, R logo and XMS and people tend to use uh, this uh, uh, beautiful graph. It's usually generated after we align all the spectra and generate a deviation plot. Today we are going to try to generate one similar, but much less, uh, not as this den density. But we are going to have one graph like this. <coughs> so uh, yesterday they mentioned about uh, uh, target metabolomics or quantitative metabolomics. So uh, we also tried a bit using genomics. Uh, we just manually adjusting and identify. Um, but for LC, uh, for another main field is uh, MS based. So MS based is uh, a lot of them is uh, uh, untargeted. So I guess LCMS is mo quite popular. People are usually starting with untargeted and try to uh, get the important peaks and. Uh, after identifying important peaks and further doing downstream analysis validation. So that's uh, uh, quite popular. So today we are going to use uh, uh, one of the most widely used tools. It's called XCMS. So I'm not sure how many of you, you guys have heard about XCMS. Yeah? yeah. <coughs> and uh, so uh, uh, Metab analysts actually use XCMS at online to support very simple uh, spectral processing, but if you really want to use a full power XMS, you really need to learn because it's so flexible and uh, a lot of parameter is not exposed through Metab Analyst or the other uh, tools. So using uh, XMS uh, from your own uh, laptop and you get know what's the best parameters. That's uh, and then you can upload to Metab Analyst or the other tools called XMS Online. So you know it and you up upload it. So it's very important to try first on your own, then start using some online tools. I was never able to use the online tools. <laughs> okay, today we are going to learn how to use that. <laughs> so, uh, this is an overview of um, uh, what, the, basically this whole uh, uh, untargeted metabolomics uh, flowchart uh, for MS-based. So, we collect our spectra, usually uh, for the uh, most standard format is uh, NetCDF or MZXML. Uh, and there's a lot of other uh, proprietary format, but usually there's a convert. You can convert to this standard format. After this standard format, and we can uh, do the data processing. So that's, uh, that's a requirement. We need to have our data in this uh, kind of format. Then we load into XMS, and, uh, and we are in this lab, we are going to learn how to process this uh, spectra using XMS. So after we process the spectra and we get um, a peak list table, and this table is really suitable for statistical analysis, we can directly uh, upload it to a meta analyst, which is covered in next module. And uh, also, we uh, for this very significant <coughs> peaks, and we we can do some potential identification. Uh, yesterday we learned something using HMDB. Today we. Uh, also, metalling and uh, some pathway analysis. If we identify the compound, uh, we know the names, we can also do some functional analysis. So, that's uh, possibly tr uh, tried yesterday in the integrated assignment. But today, we are going to focus on the um, uh, process in the peaks, and uh, then next modules uh, are using Metab Analyst to do its statistical analysis. Uh, so this is a, a very uh, brief 
mentioning about R and bioconductor. And we do have a R review session before this uh, uh, our workshop. And we only see four people, but I guess you guys already re did your homework. So I just briefly uh, just mentioned R is a statistical language. It's free and open source. And, uh, and it's quite unique, so it's really worth learning. So even you do not not come with uh, command line, but it really worth the time, just learn a bit. And gradually you'll find it's quite useful. And uh, especially if you're doing bi metabolomics, it's uh, uh, using R and XMS like today. But if a lot of people are also doing some other omics like uh, microarrays, RNA sequence analysis. So uh, R and Bioconduct have a lot of package to help you doing that. So use, uh, learning R is really worth it. And uh, so limitation, as, uh, as Michelle mentioned, so uh, at the start, you probably kind of feel a uh, little bit uh, intimidated because uh, command line and typing and uh, stuff, but uh, uh, you should be uh, just have strong motivation. You can overcome it. So once you overcome the first stage, and you find it very useful. <coughs> now this is a little bit of history about. This slide deck that presenting from. Okay. Yeah, basically adding some slides is try to motivate <laughs> with, with you guys to learn. So it's a, uh, uh, all this, uh, our command will, uh, used in script will be the same. So this is a little um, history about XMS. So it is a release, first official release in 2006, and uh, then did a uh, adding <coughs> uh, new algorithms to uh, uh, process high resolution is a uh, sent wave algorithm. It's 2009, 2010. So there's uh, several uh, um, major up updates si since then. So here I should, uh, there's another one is XMS online. So I finally made it online. I'm going to uh, gradually discuss it, uh, discuss it XM online in the last uh, few slides. So. It, could, it is very uh, most widely used for untargeted metabolomics. That's why we choose to uh, learn. So uh, again, about uh, XCMS, it is a uh, 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 free, open source, and powerful and flexible. So uh, because metabolomics using a variety of uh, kind of ten to use variety of instrument, and uh, uh, if you use a GUI interface, and sometimes you just cannot. Uh, processing it because it doesn't give you the uh, parameters. So it, using a command line, you can really do a lot of adaptation to your own uh, specific configurations. So Metabol uh, 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 the XCMS also high throughput. Unlike, uh, uh, unlike uh, uh, Genomic yesterday, you're doing one by one. Um, XCMS, you can really put all your files into a folder. It will process in one by one and al doing alignment. So it's really fast. So it's a uh, batch processing. And the uh, uh, algorithm is uh, very good. So it's uh, have the very good uh, peak detection and the deconvolution and alignment. So this is a um, uh, critical comparison about all the popular uh, MS processing tools, including some commercial ones I published uh, several years ago. So. Uh, you can see from here is P and M. A P is proteomics, M is metabolomics. So we are just focusing, today we go focus on metabolomics. As you can see, XCMS uh, in the two grain is metabolomics data. It's the high, highest average precision and recall. So it's really amazing. And if you really pay attention to this time, and it's almost one order lower compared to other tools, including commercial ones. It's so fast. So. Uh, really make XMS a kind of very favorite tools for a lot of uh, uh, people like me. I really like to use this tool because it's fast and uh, can do batch processing. So also it's flexible. <coughs> so uh, this is an overview of uh, what XMS try to do. So um, we uh, first is uh, we have our uh, uh, spectra ready. This is a uh, multiple samples. Then we use XCMS, load the sample, and XCMS will try to extract the peaks. And this peak, you can see, it's a, a kind of 
uh, noisy, <coughs> and uh, and the next one is try to um, uh, do the alignment. So uh, XCMS use a very novel nonlinear alignment. Use some it selects some internal standards in uh, just optimal endogenous standards. So basically, they use that. Uh, peaks inside, they found it's more reliable, so they select internal. You don't need to tell, tell him w which compound to use. It will select by itself and determine what's the best and do an alignment. And the job is, yeah. I have a question actually. <coughs> what is it selecting? Because, for example, if we have, like, okay, I have in my data some noise coming in, yeah. which is quite significant. So, will it align to this noise or will it align to different ions? What is it selecting? It's selecting, so it, it will try to determine what's the baseline, what's the real features. So once it, it detecting that, it, it will select the real features. So and this process is iterative. At the beginning, it try to best guess. But once they uh, try to process multiple samples, and they realize at this position, this more likely have a real feature, it will use a more strict uh, threshold to detect, OK, I'm just looking hard at this one. So it has several rounds of selecting. And finally, you will get all the peaks aligned and see if whether these features <coughs> consistently appear in different features. If only appear in a few samples, and it's more likely to be artifact or noise. So there's several tracks we are going to discuss later. Okay. So uh, you can see uh, this is a, a nonlinear alignment. And after alignment, you can see it's more um, aligned. So here is a, a noise and it's aligned. And uh, <coughs> uh, after alignment, we can uh, we, we will uh, we can export this aligned peaks, which is uh, become a table. Uh, the value will be this peak intensities and uh, their mass and return time for the identities. And this can be really useful for uh, this t test. It's building XCMS. We are going to briefly mention it, but uh, we can also do upload it to um, Metab Analyst. <coughs> Yeah. So the alignment is done between different samples, no? Yes. So it's not done because a raw data, one single raw data, is uh, yeah. a yeah. So, yeah. That's one sample. Yeah. So you process sample uh, first, try to detect in the um, peaks. To detect the peaks. Yeah, so and then process peak all peak the peak samples. Peak peak. Yeah. yeah, then get all the samples and try to align them between different samples. Yeah. Different samples. Right? Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, XCMS recently also added uh, support for uh, M MSMS. So that's we're not going to cover this, but uh, just let you know it do have these features. So uh, uh, this is some very simple notes about uh, the command, uh, the, the symbol. So if you use a pound sign, it means a start up uh, <coughs> the comments. So all this. Uh, Things after is just for us to read, to understand. It's not. It's going to be ignored by R. And uh, this arrow sign here, uh, this is a start of R command. So uh, you you are not going to enter error. So uh, this arrow sign, you just enter it after this one. So this is a basic uh, basic format uh, for R. Uh, this is your. Uh, output the data, and uh, this is assignment, and this is function name you are going to call. And within this bracket is your input data. So I guess it's, uh, if you're doing a, some program use MATLAB or Java or any program, it's more or less the same. But uh, here is a unique is arrow. The arrow is uh, not an equal sign, it's arrow. So it's uh, uh, quite uh, uh, specific for R. So in, at any time, and you're just not quite sure about uh, what this function is doing, which parameter it accept, and you can use a question mark before <coughs> this function name, and uh, you will just uh, 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 initiate a help page about these functions. So uh, also, if you still find not, not informative, Google this function. Usually, there's a lot of information about this function. So it's uh, uh, for help with R, there's uh, just so many resources. You're n never alone. So for today, uh, Michelle already uh, mentioned about uh, uh, we need to install the latest R. Uh, I guess you guys already did. And uh, we did XCMS package installed. 
and we are go going to use a test data. It's called a uh, uh, FAH key knockout in, uh, installed. And uh, in I also realized that uh, <coughs> uh, uh, there's an, an another package called multi-test. So I'm not sure uh, Michelle mentioned that. So in case you haven't you you, you didn't install the uh, mm, uh, uh, you can just do, do the same thing, uh, install this uh, multi-test, because uh, one command will e e require this package. Some of them is not, probably not installed by default. So, oh, so let's everybody just check that you have, um, that you, um, let's have everybody install the multi-test. Yeah, I'm going back to the, um, Yeah, so uh, go, to your, go to your script, copy this line, copy this line, you see this line, uh, source, uh, first copy this line, okay, and uh, then you issue this second line, bulk light multitask. Yeah, some, some of you have installed and... Uh, <laughs> Mm, yeah. yeah, you just need to do this command. Uh, first, you have this uh, source. Okay, in the source, that's not there. Okay. That command is not there. That's yeah, the source is just tell where to look for. You're not, not uh, downloaded yet. Then you issue this second command. It's called bulk light multitest. Cool. Okay, and this is really downloading these tools. If you're not sure, just re reinstall. Yeah, reinstalling BIOS. Um, for some reason, um, I know I installed it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just uh, reinstalling it right now. You, you don't need to reinstall XMS. Just install this package. Which is MUL. Can you take the <laughs> I'm you reinstall, that's reinstall. So overwrite your previous one. Yeah. 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 Which command are you following? Mm. No, just doing this one. It's, uh, it's uh, every time it doesn't remember. So it gives them the command. And you don't know where to look. Okay. So it doesn't. So uh, just to follow these two commands, uh, this uh, source. Yeah. I went back and installed from scratch XCMS FAA and this command. And then For some reason, it wasn't. Good. I had to go back and install XCMS FAAHK0 and then mock those. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Jeff, this is a bigger problem over here. If you could help resolve this one, please. So there's no, if you want to install, uh, there's n you, you need to remove this uh, command. I uh, co co uh, just uh, tell you these two commands, OK? Yeah. 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 Yes. Just these two commands. No. Okay. Let's no use a, uh, again, to reiterate, can you put a red sticker up when you're having difficulties? Yeah. 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 And uh, Carolina, you have both <coughs> the commands open 
So it's now about okay. it. And we got here to do the same thing. Oh, I didn't make a sign. So yeah. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So uh, after you get your CDF files, you put all your CDF files in, in one folder, give some names. And, uh, and here, you basically, um, you, you just uh, specify the path to your files. So in this, so this is, uh, uh, for example, your slash my um, spectra. This is a, a pretend if this your spectra located here. You just give it here. This is uh, if you really want to look uh, inside the CDF file. It's a very d designed for the high density information. So this is a format, but no, we shouldn't bother with this. It's just uh, uh, for people interested in passing it. We have really um, uh, nice passers. So this is um, uh, just for your information if you really want to know. <coughs> So the second step uh, we try to do is a peak detection. So um, for the uh, uh, mass peaks, we have three dimensions. We have m mass, m mz values, one one dimension, and the other time uh, dimension is time. So uh, the third dimension is intensity. So the peaks have uh, uh, mass, uh, mz values, and retention time. So it's these two. Usually, we try to identify these peaks by combining both, so MZ uh, and the retention time. And what we are going to compare is the intensity. So this, uh, this is usually data uh, organized this way. So for XCMS, <coughs> it try to detect the peaks at the different uh, 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 at this MZ, di uh, MZ dimension. So uh, across different retention time. So that's the slice. They are going to chop this spectra at this uh, uh, each MZ and try to detect. Now, uh, uh, this is a, a step. We are, this is our first step. And we can uh, try to do this uh, peak detection for our, uh, for our file. So I'm going to... Uh, So, let's do this. You load your library, XMS, you already did. And uh, <coughs> the second one is uh, um, load this uh, file path. So, copy and paste. Okay, I just put it up. Now we now this is the uh, uh, task have our um, uh, where this uh, folder is located. Now we want to see it, all these files. So this is our real CDF files. If you uh, if you really want interest, you can just go to this location and see where, what the file looks like. If you want to analyze your data, you should organize your all your CDF files within this within a folder and give it to the um, XMS. Yeah. So the, the, it looks like we have about twelve. Yes, we have 12 samples, 12 samples and in two groups. And we're getting all these sample files from the XCMS folder itself. And yeah, so yeah, that's a library. We're not loading it ourselves, but you could load it from outside? Yeah, this exactly. Uh, we're using the uh, data as F-A-O-H-K-O -O -O data. Um, we use this as one. Yeah, if you replace, the, replace that um, CDF path. Uh, CDF pass with if you have your own data replace it by and specify you, where you want so XMS will read from there rather than here now uh, next step this is the one uh, we are going to pick picks from each of these samples in this li current library
copy and paste. This is uh, so uh, XMS currently doing this uh, uh, peak de detection at uh, uh, for each uh, at the M MZ uh, dimension. So uh, it output uh, two numbers separated by this uh, um, colon. The first is a mass. So second one is number of peaks being detected at this. Uh, uh, yeah. Not the return time. It it. it yes. So it's it's just uh, say at uh, six hundred uh, mz and they have totally eight hundred and forty seven. So now it's a. Uh, So uh, this is really fast. If you use other tools, you will, it probably takes much longer. Mm. <coughs> so we can see we have totally 12 samples confirmed. And uh, we detect the peaks uh, at C. We can see one finish at the last 800, 1,700, uh, 500. So average of, uh, say, about 800 peaks. This is a uh, uh, just uh, basic idea about for each sample we have how many peaks. This is uh, 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 what you can read get from here, Michelle. Yep. Okay. <coughs> um, my question is that the XMS is not the same as the functions. Did you in library XMS? It's a warning, M that are warning uh, can be ignored. I test it, it's fine. But uh, I guess in next two weeks it will synchronize. So it's just uh, we use the uh, most uh, recent uh, R. That's usually you get such problem. Yeah, it's, now it's still because library comes with an error. XMS is still
Yeah. yeah. So what is it searching here? Which kind of parameters value you have? So uh, uh, for the default, <coughs> uh, and it, it, there are several parameters. So default to the work most of the time. But there are several parameters, for example, scan range. If you really know, for example, uh, the start of the uh, spectra is not good, you can scan just up to, say, uh, up to 200 or up to 300. So you can specify here. And uh, the other one is called FWHM. It's uh, um, four widths at half, um, at half uh, height. So uh, default is 30 seconds. If you really know what you're doing, you can specify different parameters. You need to experiment with it. So a default should work most time, but uh, uh, if you know, if you don't find good results, you probably need to tweak it a little bit. But there's a lot of suggestions uh, based on different instruments you are used and what type of columns. So you can try different ones. But this is again, it's no hard rules. It's kind of uh, try and error. So, so oh, Jeff, would yeah. you recommend what you done? Say you've got to your yeah. <coughs> Would you recommend looking at the peak list you get and comparing yeah. it to some of the raw spectrum just to make sure it's, yes. it's, it's not missing anything or yeah. misidentifying anything? Yeah, you, you really always, uh, we're going to cover last step, just visualize some peaks. You really want to sure it is uh, real peaks as high intensity, as high confidence. and. Uh, so uh, visualization is important. And some people also suggest I uh, use two different orthogonal tools to double check whether these peaks also detected. It. So it's a uh, um, LCMS spectra quite noisy. So a visualization is always a uh, second to check, see whether you want. So there's another uh, important uh, parameter is a sand wave, which is for a higher resolution um, uh, uh, spectra. So you, you can try this. if. But for us, this is uh, not the case. But it just let you know if you use a very high resolution sp uh, spectra, you can use this sand wave. Probably give you much more uh, features. So after we detect all the peaks, we try to do align the peaks, uh, uh, align the peak uh, based on their retention time, and uh, uh, so. Uh, and align the peaks at the same time correct, correcting the retention time. So it's really their location also being uh, shifted. So we can compare uh, the same peaks. Uh, we know it's consistent across different samples. So this is just the overview of before the alignment and after alignment. This is just the... Uh, so again, uh, peak alignment is across different uh, samples, and uh, same time with correcting the uh, uh, retaining time drift, and uh, we can do it now. And uh, here is uh, bring up your console, and uh, we do the peak alignment. We do group, copy, paste. Can you follow? I'll follow here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, this is the output from basically how many groups and uh, being output here. So uh, after we do an alignment and we we do retention time cor correction. Where are these numbers here? Oh, this is groups detected. Basically, we uh, we be believe there's a kind of um, we align the peaks, and um, these peaks within the same range, or we just put them together. This uh, means a group. So, so th these are like M over C is three sixty. Four times. Both the 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 this this uh, within this uh, peak groups, each peak is identified by both retention time and MZ. So but that number one. Oh, this is number of groups. Just it's just statistic summary. It's not real. Uh, not uh, 
just to give you output, the real data we are going to visualize, I see the real data uh, yeah. in the next slide. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm noticing that 262 is close to 250 and 325 plus 300. So it's, is it kind of bending things and when it does initial peak detection? And yeah, 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 right. Kind of, there's some kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more or less like that, but uh, I, uh, the internal should be more uh, comp advanced than that. So it default the child binning peaks closed uh, with each other, but uh, they have internal um, uh, reference uh, kind of standard using peak using some metabolites, so shifting some way from more, some way less. Uh, so it's in inside it's it's use a non-linear alignment. So I'm not going to explain details, but the idea is the same. The binning peaks close to each other in a group, but uh, how they shift the peaks is uh, they determine internal. For each compound, each peak, they, they, they calculate optimal ones. So it's... So we do not get any information from the number, right? No, we do get an image. This is uh, so how many peaks, uh, uh, sorry, how many groups we get. It just tell you... So we have 600. <coughs> we have about 600. Okay. Yeah. How do you, where's 600? We're going to visualize later. This is just a summary. It's uh, basically this is. But how do you, why are you saying 600? Oh, just around us. Oh, this is a group number it detected. Okay. Yeah. We we know each. It's uh, some uh, at this moment. Uh, all the information is inside this one. So we have all the information. We are going to visualize later. So. Uh, so So this is only a summary. Actually, we have all the retention time and MZ uh, stored inside here. We are going to visualize it as a table. We are going to plot it. So uh, this is just a uh, summary. So we are going to see the real data. See. Now, uh, after we're doing alignment, uh, we're doing a retention time correction. Basically, like this is just to relabel each uh, um, picks uh, according to their um, group media value. Basically, we put it in the same group. We, are, we want to change the label as a, for the same group. We want to have the same uh, consistent MZ and uh, retention time. So when we compare, we know uh, where they are. Uh, what they, we are referring to, because even within each group, each um, it's very close, but not the same. But when we want, want to compare them, we really want to in a consistent label, so we can just have the same row, same column. And uh, you're going to get this uh, 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 a summary like this. So, okay. So this is, uh, for example, uh, if, if we choose a zero uh, at the, just a reference, and some sample is uh, shifted uh, positive, basically deviate more. Sometimes uh, some samples will be uh, just uh, faster. So sometimes running slow, sometimes faster. You, for each sample, it's plotted in different. Uh, um, we have 12 samples. For each one, it's just shifted differently. So it, it tried to adjust by, based for each sample. They have different uh, adjustment factor. And uh, in the and below, there's a density plot. And basically, it shows uh, what, what's a correction compared to uh, uh, a corrected one compared to before and after what's, what's been done. So this is a, a basic summary of what uh, Drift for this sample. So far, everything looks fine, but if for in certain cases, if you really see see, see samples far away from this major groups, the drift is quite different. It probably means something with the instrument or something. So so far, it seems all um, more or less close and seems normal. So is this the adjusting? Yeah, it, yeah. This is for each spectra. It plot how much been. Uh, Based on their alignment, how much being adjusted or how much is shifted. So they adjust it based on how much it did, you think it's shifted too much and just adjust more for this uh, sample. And for some samples, it's really no much adjustment. For some samples, it's really uh, try to increase, some may try to decrease. The 
the final goals, try to make them consistent so we can compare them. Do you have more questions about this graph? This is probably the uh, main graph. This is a graph I'm referring to uh, at the beginning. If we have thousands of spectra, we plot them, we, s we can see a very densely packed this, uh, drift. Um, is there a way for us to plot something like this? Like, uh, yeah, it's not offered by, um, by, uh, by XCMS. It, it, for the plot, okay, I, I see your question. So for the plot like this, it's actually it's all your data point. You plot a, a, a range to, a, in this case, it's a, I think it's M, MZ. So what have we ordered and plotted is, is basically you can generate a plot like this, but this is not offered in XMS by default, although it's relatively easy to do if you know R. You just get all the data points, you plot them. It will, if you order them, it's naturally from this, from these curves. So it is no magic. You just need this high density plot organized in this plot, uh, and it will show up like this. So, so uh, is it a code or? Uh, no. Yeah, it's com it, this is actually a simple command. You need to have this data. You sort it according to the MZ and you plot it, and you're going to have a, a graph like this. So it's it's if you know beta R, and it's not difficult to do. So this is an, an um, So, uh, so far everybody follows? Okay, good. Now, after we're doing alignment and uh, correcting uh, for retention time, and we just basically have our bad knowledge. We know all the uh, spectra looks like and where the real peaks are located, and we can try to uh, uh, iterate and try to uh, improve whether we can improve uh, detecting more peaks because we know where which range locate the real peaks, other range probably just noise. So we can redo the whole process, rescan the raw spectra, and try to uh, see if we can improve. So again, the command is simple, and we can do it now. Uh, okay, so um, uh, one step from before, before we're doing this, uh, uh, um, before we're doing this and move to uh, field peaks, or we can redo the regrouping because once we are doing the retention time, we, c we can try to uh, do a regroup. So uh, here's a parameter, I put it here. So this is uh, just for illustration. We can. Uh, when, uh, when we group peaks, we can give, give them some uh, uh, default, it is 13 as I mentioned, but we can give them tighter range if we know better, but uh, in some cases it changes, sometimes it did, did not, so this is another, uh, it's as a, uh, BW is um, uh, width of this um, on the mass, it's uh, default is 13, but uh, we give them 10 and they see if it changes. But in this case, it doesn't change. So uh, it's, it's a parameter just, you, you don't have to, uh, this is a parameter just for each one. one some cases, when in certain uh, um, spectra, and you do see, you detect more groups. Uh, so uh, this is a, um, uh, this is a follow to your question. So you group these peaks with different beams, but once you align them, the, the group can be tighter, right? You can really give them a tighter uh, range, see? Yeah, but in this case, we still get the same. So we, we really have a very neat uh, uh, group. So uh, that's that's one uh, parameter uh, you can try. And uh, same. Okay. So, uh, 
Oh, you, you want us to try it with that? You can try on uh, this. I just the purpose is to give you the uh, what's the parameters available. So that one sometimes do um, change the result. But we can see it's more or less same, right? This um, uh, same numbers. Now we do the field picks, as I just mentioned. We try to redo it again, and uh, yeah, the same. So when we do the field picks, it try to redetect in uh, new features and write it uh, uh, write it down. But uh, you, you can see here some warnings, and you can see what's the inside of the warnings. And uh, so it, it tells you something is out of range, because we are trying to align different spectres. Some spectra probably have a long retention time, and some are short. So it's not totally the same. So it complains. We can just uh, ignore them. So what did you do here? Sorry, I missed it. Uh, see? Uh, so this is field picks, and uh, but after field picks, you get some warnings, and you, you, in this case, you want to see what warnings tell you, and this is a warnings basically tell you uh, try to uh, fill the picks in certain area, but you just don't have uh, have have no value. So basically, uh, you can ignore because that's we try to get all the spectra. Some is longer, some is short. So it's it's that's uh, unavoidable. No group information. Uh, did you do a, a group first, like uh, do this one first, and do this one? BW is just for a range of mass you want to uh, specify for each uh, for the grouping when you try to align the peaks. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, what is what does it mean? Okay, um, help, uh, um, uh, help group, try to uh, use command. Help. Help uh, group, okay. If you really want to find uh, each exact parameter, what it means, uh, do this uh, command, and you, you'll get, have a list of help information for what function doing, what parameter available. Yeah, doing this. Yeah, yeah selecting which, which, which uh, you want. Just always follow this. Uh, 
higher to you see, it's now. So it's now. This is what opened up when I did how to complete my project. We should be able to do something else. After that, it's group dancing. So it is a group dancing, group dancing that's been done with bandwidth, standard deviation, and all the other things that have happened. So this data. You can put that there. Yeah. Where can, can I be in yours? Why are you asking this message? This is the help. Yeah. 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 You request one? Yeah. 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 I didn't do. I didn't do the change of the limbs. But uh, you do a group of So I mean, so how do you get the idea? You just go to the first one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
group, uh, whole samples because some MZ default is a medium value or mean value. Mm, MZ mean or MZ max is uh, uh, within this group, which is uh, lowest, which highest. Uh, same for the retention time, uh, retention time, mean and max, and peak intensity area. This is the things we try to compare. So in, in order to compare, we, we want to have the same uh, MZ retention time. This all we try to align and change the label to this one. But uh, within the sample, actually, there, there are certain ranges. That's why we want to do a, a retention time correction and the relabeling with the same number within this group. So now we can really see what's inside. And we are going back. So here, it, uh, uh, okay. For, uh, we see the follow uh, me. This one. This is uh, mm, we get the peaks. We want to see the top ten, and uh, and you are going to see the same. Okay, follow uh, follow me. Uh, typing like this, you see the peaks. So we use PIX. A PIX is a um, function name, and the follow function name is your object, is your input data. In this case, it's XSG we processed before, and uh, we want to see the first ten rows. If you really want to see all the PIX files, for example, you want to see uh, um, my PIX, my all my PIX, okay, all my PIX, and uh, you. You can save it to a new object, so you see the pics. So if you're doing this, um, my pics will will have save all all your all your pics. This is just this uh, assignment to a new uh, to a new object. If you're really interested in pics, but this pics is a um, as I mentioned, it's not not organized well into a uh, table for statistical analysis, but just for you to uh, see uh, these peaks. Uh, this is for the sample one. You can see this is a really long sample for each sample. Which peaks? Uh, it's just uh, several thousand of uh, long ones. So, so if everybody have is okay. You can get your pics and see what's installed inside that object, right? So um, uh, we can, uh, in, at this step, we can e either just uh, using some um, uh, build-in t-test, build-in XMS, try to do some analysis, or the other one is. Uh, 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 Save in a table. We can upload to Metabo Analyst, which is uh, we're going to cover next. Uh, so, uh, so uh, I'm going to show you how to do internal uh, uh, t statistics and find some important peaks. So. It is in the script. Is a is in the lower. Uh, the last part you did, PIX. Oh, yeah. So, sorry. PIX is uh, just for uh, visualize. It's not uh, uh, useful. No, okay. Uh, for, yeah. You can write it down or. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So at this moment, uh, this X, uh, uh, SG contains all the information we need. So we can either save it as a uh, table, to, uh, which is going to be a super for metabolic analyst uh, to uh, analysis. We can do this or do a, a t-test. Uh, uh, for, okay, for the clarity, we just follow what's in the script. 
So we can first do this uh, save as a table. Uh, you copy and paste this uh, file. Mm, copy paste this command. Again, this this one a group of val. You get all these group values. Uh, previous you see peaks. Uh, this peaks is not really uh, compatible for statistical analysis. We just didn't, we need a group values. So this is a command to get group values. Uh, oh, okay. find yes. So uh, there are several um, uh, parameters. Intensity uh, always means original. There's a several other uh, 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 media retention time. Using media retention time, use original intensity to specify. Um, if you have doubts, uh, help search is group values. There are several other uh, options, but this is you mm, related to the work. Um, fine. Now we have all these group values inside the data, and we can see what's inside this data. This will be mm, two four. Now this is a. Uh, this will be. The data table we are going to work with. This is data table is uh, uh, on the column as different samples. Okay, KOC 15, 16, and wild type. So it's 12 samples we have in each column, and on each row is uh, peaks, which is identified by their media retention uh, media retention time, and uh, um, uh, and the mass media retention time. This intensity is. Uh, Original intensity peak area. So, so this is we gave it, and this is table. And what we're interested in is uh, for each of these peaks, uh, we compare their intensities. Some of them probably higher or lower in different groups. So this is a peak area so we we try to compare. So that's. Uh, so, sorry, Jeff. When you talk about the original intensity, yeah, is that are going back to the original um, sort of raw spectrum and picking out the original intensity before it's sort of worked to a line? <coughs> yeah, the, there's raw uh, original intensity, there's also kind of uh, uh, peak height. So for each peak, and people just think uh, what's the representation of the, you, you always want the peak representing the concentration. So the peak height. It, original intensity there's a uh, uh, normalized uh, or there's different calculations how 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 you perceive uh, what's the best representation of these concentrations okay so the, the original that you're talking about in original intensity just means that you're choosing not to do any no transformations but if exactly you, to, you could yeah yeah so it it already had this information. Uh, have, uh, when you go to group value, they have several options. They already have this building. You just pick this one, and uh, uh, there's a, a maximal uh, peak intensity based on. So, uh, um, so there's several options. You 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 can see some of the values very different. So for for me, it's a uh, original is more comfortable unless you have strong reason to use the other values. So you can uh, see uh, see this uh, group file. See how uh, other options, what other people think about it. So this is... Now we have our data, and uh, this data is uh, suitable for statistical analysis and a visualization, because it's organized as uh, peaks and the samples. So this is always we use it. So now we are going to uh, this step. We want to save it to... Um, uh, Save as a table so we can upload or upload to MetaBalanced or other tools. So this is this command. But before I, uh, before we go to that command, let's look at what this, uh, this guy contains. Okay. So X, uh, XMS, uh, XCMS have a kind of its object. When they read in, it will uh, read in all these group labels and uh, uh, basically this is the key Stuff. So if you see this, you see this uh, label is a knockout, a wild type. And so um, this is we try to incorporate it into this uh, table so we can uh, tell statistics software where this sample located. 
uh, which sample it belongs, so which group it belongs. Does it be labels? Yeah, I'm, go <laughs> I'm going to talk, talk about that in a moment. Labels means you compare two groups, uh, and which two group one, group uh, two, or control a disease, right? You always uh, uh, see, so far, <coughs> this is a sample, so you, which two groups you want to compare, right? You need to let the system know this group try to do that, and uh, you, you understand it in uh, up to its issue this command, okay? Now we try to insert these group labels into our uh, uh, data set. Now we ah, okay. It's getting longer. So, okay. So if, uh, if we do the same um, uh, command, we can see we have an actual label on top. It's group. It's knockout, a knockout first, first, and we have wild type. So this is a label. Because when you upload to um, MetaMyList, it really expect you to give them which group it come from. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but in, uh, in uh, let's do this again. Uh, let's save it, and I will tell you more. And it's more better visualized from Excel. Okay, we save it to your current folder. And we give a name called mypicktable.csv. CSV is a comma separated uh, value, so each value is separated comma. So we save it. And uh, okay, I want to see where I am. And uh, I'm in my current folder. And I can see where I am. And uh, my picks table. I have my pick table here. And you can open it from Excel, and you can see what it looks like. So, so this group label you can really manually in, in enter. So you don't need to uh, use a command if you don't. So you know which uh, sample is from. You can really manually add in this table. So it's uh, uh, the goal is try to. Um, you tell, need to tell uh, which sample from which, from control or treatment. That's so by essentially adding an extra row there. Yes, essentially adding extra row. You can manually insert it, open from Excel, you insert that row. So that's the goal. Any questions so far? So again, this is a one visualized from uh, it's on the slide. So this is uh, what you get, and this is why it's for statistical analysis. You have the first row is a, a label for different um, samples. And uh, the each um, the row is uh, uh, picks. You have MZ and uh, retention time. And uh, at this moment, he, and this was suitable for a lot of statistical analysis. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, given that the rest of the, each of the columns that are there. Yeah. So it's, it's rows with the plans, isn't it? Would you be concerned that the zeros or would you think <coughs> there's like We can visualize the peak, that's what we are going to discuss. Okay. And some some of them really have no peaks there and we, we were confident it's zero or I mean that's uh, uh, so okay. And uh, So, uh, X, as I mentioned, XCMS also have a built-in uh, called uh, uh, diff report. Actually, use a t-test to do the things. And uh, 
we can do some very simple analysis here, and more advanced is for metabolic analysts. So we, we can do a simple analysis and see uh, uh, significant peaks. We can visualize the peaks. Okay, this is what uh, we try to do next. Okay. So copy and paste this command, diff report. And the result is a table and sorted according to p-values. We can see the top four. Okay, this is a very uh, uh, yeah, because you are loaded. When you install, you are loaded before. Okay, uh, I didn't install, uh, so this is fine. You are in your uh, uh, memory. If it's not there, it will complain. Yeah, the top four lines are basically ranked by the p-values. If we see the p-values here, and this p-values, so it's the top most significant peaks, and followed by the, yeah, this you can see p-value increase. And for each peak, there are t-statistics and the fold change, and mz, m uh, retention time. Uh, see, here is a number of peaks detected. In this case, it's 12. Basically, this peak show up in 12 samples. And here we only see the peaks show up in seven samples. So in five samples, that means they're going to have a value zero. And so that's uh, p value is then in a first. Uh, it's too long, and here p value. Oh. Yeah. And really summarizing the uh, um, peaks, and this is a. Uh, 12 with 6, 6. And for this one, it's interesting. We only see these peaks in uh, 7 samples. Actually, majority in the knockout. And the wild type, we don't have it. So it could be a knockout specific, and this peak. And it's very interesting to see. And we are going to visualize the selected and we'll visualize it later. But we just, uh, just see the number. We, we can see some interesting stuff here. So. Uh, Okay. In order to um, see we uh, plot this um, uh, peaks, we need to get this uh, uh, group uh, stuff. So if you group this one, you get this. Uh, we want to see what's what's inside. So for the each peaks, it's summarizing. Uh, uh, get the groups of peaks and summarizing uh, whether it's how many have been showed up and. Uh, uh, which group is it's, it's uh, in is knockout is three and wild type five. Now uh, the goal why we're we doing this is because we want to plot it, plot uh, extracted uh, iron. Oh, sorry, plot uh, extract extracted iron chromatography. So okay, here is the command we are going to use. We copy and paste. Now, uh, this command, what it means is uh, we want to have a retention time more than uh, 2,600, but less than 2,700. And we'll show up in at least eight samples. So you can have it uh, at least, uh, say, uh, uh, equals 12. So you want to show up in all 12. But see, uh, uh, so this is uh, here is your uh, sel selecting range. So what um, um, retention time range you want to focus on. Let's just uh, do this first. Then we can really select some other peaks based on what we saw it previously, see what's the main difference. So this is, uh, uh, so we get these groups and we see what's inside here. And this is all the peak index. So we have all this 
uh, pigs show up in at least eight. So um, this one probably. So. Uh, what's uh, what's the uh, uh, where th that this output is different? Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, if, uh, probably I will give one more uh, uh, corrections when I. Yeah, okay, you got the fun. You, you got all the same. So. <laughs> I don't correct you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So I, in between, I showed one. Probably I did the binning correction uh, a little different. But uh, uh, let's visualize it. So the goal is to visualize the data. So. Now we are visualizing these peaks across different uh, uh, groups. <coughs> so. We have, for example, here I specify one because this is a group. We have this group index. We have we now have about twelve um, groups of picks. We just want to see the first one. So now the extracted uh, ion group chromatograph is uh, should show up. I think. Uh, okay. Come on. Uh, Mm, sorry, I haven't plotted yet. So we extract it again. Uh, we, we extract it, uh, we need to plot it. Okay, that's this. Now we copy and paste the second one. Paste. And uh, so we, now we see, uh, see these peaks across different samples. This peak is aligned, you see that the center always align nicely, and the color is according to different groups. And so this is a, uh, let me explain this. Uh, this is a basic R command, or uh, you let people how do you color your, uh, color your uh, graphics according to class labels. What you usually do is, uh, uh, as uh, at this, you have your your labels, and you convert it to a numeric because uh, one you uh, one two. Let's see the numbers. So what you get is uh, numbers one and two. Basically, one means black, two means red. So you really want to color them differently. And they, so this is a ba very basic R. Uh, mm, Kind of coloring schema. I assume you guys are fine with this one. Yes. <coughs> See, this one's uh, already uh, because we use XMS. It's already added there. No, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see. And. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, legend. Uh, legend. Uh, I, yeah, I, e, just help legend, okay? E, you can add a legend here. Uh, I'm just there. Okay. Are you? I did. It is question mark. Yeah. Not seeing that. Yeah, I. I mm. Thank you, sir.
<coughs> what do you mean? You you add legend something? Yeah, the the plot is legend. It's, sorry, the, the name is legend. You just need to uh, specify with uh, um, w legend, for example. I'm just thinking about. Uh, yeah, I need legend where you located at top, and what's the uh, name? What's the one you put there? I I uh, I couldn't do it in, out of my mind. I also need to see uh, what's the um, what's the grammar. I'm the same as you guys. So I, you question legend. Yeah, but my computer my don't have. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I assume legend is uh, you and uh, where you located. So I'm not going to issue this. Legend <laughs> So uh, yeah, I can see him. Let's see. Um, let's see what happened because uh, you asked me something. Uh, it's uh, I don't have your mind. Let me let's see what's the error. No, missing with no default. Uh, uh, talk. Yeah. Can I see? Uh, see. I had a le legend. See. Uh, uh, legend top. Okay, and the second one gave you a label as a uh, uh, kill uh, wild type, and the fill is uh, one or two. It's uh, uh, basically one or two is as I showed here. One is black and two is uh, two is um, red. So uh, so you can specify in the bottom uh, or the right. So you can you can add a legend. Okay, uh, but again, this is very uh, Basic. Uh, see, it, when you add it to right, it's here. So, um, but a, a lot there's a lot of fancy ways, advanced options, and um, yeah, I uh, so search it, and you always find some good suggestions. Oh yeah, sure. Because I'm doing a lot of stuff. Sometimes I'm just uh, uh, so the def you need you need to uh, just a little bit <coughs> working with R and you know. S no, no, no. What I meant was the plot command. In yeah, yeah. I'm surprised it doesn't have a legend that you just send it as a parameter. That's what I. It's a very good suggestion. Like, yeah. It seems like. Yeah. And uh, I think they have uh, default is X label, Y label, and the title. But I'm not sure legend is included. And did a question about plot isn't giving the answer quickly. Yeah, plot is so complicated, so many options. And uh, yeah, you just choose legend. The, the other one is a par, is a parameter, but it's a uh, just long list of things you can customize, get to whatever you want. But it's. But plot is a, is a fundamental R command, right? Yeah. It's an R command. But it's so flexible, became almost useless if you search plot. Uh, just so many options. So, uh, that's, that's what I meant. I know, that's a very good, uh, I totally agree. You, it's, uh, you get a very good, uh, uh,
think for multitest it's a derived it's an inherited <coughs> method. Yeah, yeah. Inherited yeah. Okay. That's probably what it is. Okay, now we are doing another one. It's um we just uh, explore our data. Uh, we saw uh, some peaks is uh, significant based on the simple t-test and we really want to see uh, how it's different because before I showed you this uh, uh, plot and you see uh, some is high, some is low, it's not really uh, so different between two groups. Now we want to see something whether it's uh, this top uh, peaks is really different, okay? And we, we want to see uh, select based on uh, retention time again, see uh, we have this uh, first one is the uh, three three nine one, uh, uh, three three. Oh, okay, no, no, no. Let's see this range. Um, Me is three three eight two, high three three nine six. Okay, we three three eight two. Uh, okay, three eighteen three nineteen seven. Okay. Now just to go back to the previous uh, previous uh, command we issued uh, three three nine seven. I, I assume I remember it. Three three eight two. Uh, three three eighteen one. So now because we saw that peaks is significant, we want to select and um, select it and visualize it. Okay. Now we get a, we will get a different uh, group index. So you change the value. So the value is 338 Yeah, let's, yeah, uh, uh, you will be slightly different, but when we plot, we are selecting the same thing. It should say a signal difference. So now we uh, get this uh, extracted ion chromatography. Uh, mm. From the f also the first one, or you can try the second one, but then uh, just use the. Uh, now we plot it. Huh. Where's plot function? Okay, yeah, here's plot function. Go back and plot it. And you see the difference? Now, this, this, this peak is really common, and you see only expressed in. Uh, uh, black, I think it's a uh, knockout, and it's very low expressed in the other one, but it's still there. You see that, so this peak is detected in 12 samples, so all these peaks are real, and, um, but in one group it's significantly higher, the other one is low. So this is really give you the confidence, <coughs> this uh, a peak is more likely to be a, um, real peaks rather than artifacts. So here's a command I used. Um, I think this uh, this one is I select uh, uh, this range is too high. It's too high, okay? I select something is probably uh, internally is uh, uh, belong to uh, so. So you, 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 even you get a slightly different uh, index, but you plot, you see the same graph, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, because I... Uh, okay. So, so far, have any questions? So the, the big, uh, that's the main reasons we want to use XMS. So we can interactively interrogate this uh, data, really want to see the peaks we found interesting is uh, there. And if you use a Metabo Analyst or you use a even XMS online, and you just, you, it doesn't allow you. Basically, whatever is picks is picks, and you just couldn't get this. So that's why we want to learn this. So the picks are not supposed to be perfectly aligned? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it should be. But uh, I think sometimes it doesn't do a job it want. It's oh. ideal. So in the best scenario, we should see all the peaks and packs overlap. Yes, uh, the position-wise, but height height will be different. So the previous one looks nicer, right? So the, this one is slightly out. Sh uh, sh yeah, it depends. Some yeah. Yeah. 
your criteria, you pick out uh, the two the, the upper and the lower bounds for where you want to concentrate on. But you've got the third criteria for the number of peaks has to be greater than eight. Yeah. Um, you can ask, you can get them, okay, you have to uh, show up or uh, have to show up in at least the in all 12, because you know you have 12 samples, you want to appear in all 12, it's, it's a... Yeah. Yeah. What happens if you don't have that count as it not being a peak? No. I, no, zero is no peak, basically this is what it's for. But if you've got a sample where that's informative, then... Yeah, okay, we, we do another another one, so follow what you suggest, see? And see, I select the first one, and first one actually show up in here, you see, 12? So it show up all of them. Let's do the second one. It will only show up in five, it's not there. So we see what it what it, sh it looks like. So I, 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 I'm uh, in the other wild type, only have one uh, being detected, oh, only in, one being detected. See, I assume the other five is all zero value, so it's no peaks there. And visualize, let's visualize it. So how to visualize this, we need to... Uh, yeah, this... This is the same retention time, uh, different mass. Okay, we try to select from here. Uh, can we select directly this one, okay. So this is unique. Let's try this one, okay. We want to select their retention medium, medium retention index equals to this value, okay, because this seems different from first one. This is media retention time. So, because uh, when when I select it here, you, you can immediately see this. If this they they are the same. So you are selecting. Uh, it's hard to tell from the first one. And let's try this one. And this one seems unique. We, we just experiment. Okay. It's. Um, Sorry, I'm not quite getting. Yeah. Why you going with median rather than the before? Yeah, because uh, you see here. Yeah. You get the same values. So retention time alone sometimes cannot tell the difference between two peaks, and that's what all I'm saying. That's probably not aligned. So here you see retention time. Another dimension is mass. So mass uh, mz is a slightly different between this. Uh, okay, so you're then using. So we can select the peaks in based on mass and based on retention time, or based on just a single one. So I, now I think uh, the reason is because they belong to different peaks. That's not aligned. They're even the same retention time, but you can see that different. Uh, mm, there's two different peaks at least from here. They have the same retention time here when we choose, but they are two different peaks, right? This is 300, 301. Yeah. So that's the, they're not perfect aligned because there's a, at this range there's a multiple peaks, and uh, it's all real, and it's not supposed to be aligned. Concentrate on that second yeah. one. Yeah. You then put in reten median retention time and the mass. Yeah, you can do that. I, I mean, that, that's basically we see this. We can really refine our query. We want to see the uh, median retention time and uh, uh, median mass equal to this one. We can all do this. Okay, let's try this. I just uh, need to remember this. Uh, uh, Parameter names, but we do see. Um, uh, um, media mem set mat equals okay. Now we are doing m z. Okay. Uh, we try to see if we can get equals, um, but uh, this is a this is a kind of dangerous because um, 
R showed up some values, it have some more digits. And uh, we, if we come up here, it could be not exact. So some, it's a range is better, that's right. So it could be, uh, so uh, let, let's go back to the, uh, let's still, let's use this one. Uh, and that copy. And that, mm, oh, mm, over. So now we have this one, and we have M Z max max M Z max. Okay, we want to find M Z max. Uh, here, copy. Here. Okay, this is a typo. Let's try to, this. This time, we just try to use the uh, m z values we saw from that second peak, and then we hope to uh, find them. And if we couldn't find a unique, we can further add this retention time. We just get all more, all more conditions and see. And, and this is a unique peak, Yeah, we hope, we hope to get a unique peak. Yeah, it's uh, because we only see the top four, and potentially some other peak have the exact same mass there. So, uh, so it's, uh, we can say it. If it's not properly aligned, that means it's contaminated. Oh, we uh, get... Uh, How about uh, five and uh, a little bit higher? I'm not sure. Twelve. <coughs> I'm not sure. Did huh. we try um, oh, yeah. meds instead of Let's see what's here. I mean, I think you should say 301.2. I think that's what you meant. Oh, right. Uh, let me check. Yeah. They do have all these things and uh, uh, okay. You want to pop two? Okay. I, I thought you wanted to round it. No. You want to uh, one instead of yeah, one nine four nine. Did you need? Yeah, I have six squares. Um. So we, we within that criteria, we didn't get a a hit. So that's uh, uh interesting. And that two minus two. Mm. Let's see. Oh, we do get one this time. Just get one, okay? Oh, I, 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 change, I just relaxed that criteria because uh, before we gave it very, oh, we gave it very stringent. Uh, we just got no hits, so it's uh, sometimes you just uh, lower the threshold and increase and see if what you get. So. Again, you try to extract it. We plot it. Yeah, well. So, uh, this is when we extract it. So once we see the peaks are uh, important, and we know they are mass range and retaining time range, and we can really query our whole peak list table based on this range to visualize it. So here I show you how to use MZ uh, and uh, MZ range uh, from mean to max. And we can always here, uh, let's uh, just here, and you can keep adding and uh, GT um, group with um, with retention time mean uh, again uh, over C um, two thousand okay and uh, group uh, less than 
uh, say two. So this is a, basically uh, I'm giving uh, some random numbers, but uh, the point is uh, you can really select the peaks, try to narrow down your range, and really make sure you select the right peak. Because so far, uh, this at even combine both retention time and and that probably you still have duplicate. In that case, you you probably just really hard to tell, but uh, hopefully if we combine all of them, you can really get this peak and visualize it. And you uh, actually you can you see it. It's it's um, given the range you plot it. You see it. It's a uh, question so far. Yeah. So whenever we plot something new. Yeah. Replace the original plot that we plot. So, if, can we plot it in a new plot, new window, so that we can see all the plots that we have? Um, That's a good <laughs> 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 see, uh, uh, in R, you can copy it and po po post on the uh, post on the uh, PowerPoint, right? You copy this image, post on, and join a new image, get post in there one by one. You can do that. This is a uh, basic thing, intuitive, right? You copy this image, and if you open uh, new presentation. So R doesn't have a function like MATLAB where you can. No, 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 do have. R do have, but if you, uh, I mean, oh. I do have. I'll show, show you the other. Okay, you can paste this. Now you see here, right? You can really do things that's more um, easy, but if you really want to learn the programming ways, you can always do it. And I can show you some basic uh, um, command to plot in that. You probably can give different names to the plots. And yeah, and title. Then plot them yes. Separately. Yeah, this is a very basic one. I didn't cover it because I assume <laughs> you guys. Yeah, the e title equals uh, your name. So now, uh, if you want to plot two side by side, M for row, C, one, two. OK, I'm not going to explain just plot, then I'm going to uh, tell you what it means and uh, first you close this one and you're doing this okay for so a graphical parameter okay now you plot uh, random plot okay uh, one two three okay oh and for uh, it's and for oh sorry and for okay no um no M Afro M Afro okay let's let's try this seems to this one M okay okay good thanks <laughs> yeah now uh yeah let's uh okay I'm going to re redo it again so M Afro okay mm, yeah it seems okay M Afro um, and then you try to plot. Now you plot. See? Let's M F. So if you want to, um, so if you now you get the side by side. If you really want to, uh, two rows. This is one one row. If you want two rows, but it's vertically aligned. As you can do this, I think. And uh, let's uh, try it. Oh, okay. Uh, let's close it and. Uh, Try it again. Sorry, and uh, yeah, you see it's vertical, so you can, and you can really have a actually have a matrix if you really give this as a two by two, right? You have four plot one two three. So, so R is basically you can do almost anything. You just need to spend time to, uh, get this low level command and the coloring and uh, tell where to label things. So it's it's a uh, uh, just in, yeah, and Google it, and Google it, it yeah, it's usually people. Any question? 